Okay guys, this is going to be a little different from my normal content. I don't typically focus on game breaking bugs and how to exploit them. However, the exploit I want to show you today is so massively broken that I know you're going to want to see it. This glitch will allow you to duplicate almost anything in your inventory to get infinite resources and virtually unlimited shards, and it will also allow you to obtain a couple of secret weapon coils that we weren't supposed to be able to get. As you can imagine, this is probably going to get patched pretty quickly, so if you want to farm a bunch of shards and upgrade resources, or get yourself some copies of your favorite coils, then get ready to learn this insane exploit. So to do this exploit, you're going to need two things. First, you need access to the arena, which means you need to have started the Cool Root quest. You don't necessarily need to have finished it completely, meaning you don't have to have returned Aether to Gaia, but you do need to progress far enough so you have access to the arena challenges. Second, you need to learn how to infinite jump. This game-breaking mechanic was accidentally introduced in patch 1.18, and it's what allows us to do the exploit. I'll have a whole infinite jumping tutorial section later in the video because it's pretty tricky to do, especially on PS4, but first, let's see how the duplication exploit works. First, before doing anything, I recommend you make a manual save that you can load in case anything goes sideways while messing around. Next, make sure anything you want to duplicate is in your inventory, so check your stash and also make sure you unload any weaves and coils you want to duplicate from your weapons and outfits. Weapons and outfits are the only thing that can't be duplicated, so if the coils and weaves are on them, you won't be able to duplicate them either. Now, the exploit works because when we're in an arena challenge, the game remembers what we had in our inventory at the start and gives us everything back at the end. We can leverage that by putting things in our stash so we have a copy there and in our inventory when we end the challenge. Of course, there's no stash in the arena pit itself, so our goal is to get out of the arena during a challenge and go find a stash. The closest stash we can get to is in Lowlands Path, so let's see how to get there. So we're just gonna head over only the best soldiers can go up against the arena that are ready and we're gonna start any open loadout challenge the open loadout ones are the first three in each set the locked loadout ones or fixed loadout is the last one cage fight works really well if you have access to it because it's a little bit easier to infinite jump out of the arena but i'm gonna go ahead and just use pack hunters since that's the first one and pretty much everybody will have access to it okay so we'll skip the intro animation here and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump down and head over for this corner where these yellow uh, spiky parts are near the wall. And there's an invisible wall there that's supposed to keep you in the arena, but we're gonna infinite jump our way over it. And then I'll show you a couple routes of how to actually get fully out of the arena. So I'm gonna tee up some smoke bombs, um, which is a good idea just in case the machines start to come after you. You can just kind of throw them off for a minute while you're doing this. Pop a smoke bomb. Infinite jump our way up. Don't worry if you have no idea how to do this yet. Almost nobody does, but I will have a tutorial section at, later in the video showing you how. So you can see here now we're on an invisible platform. We're going to keep heading this way. Now this is where things diverge. So if you haven't finished the cool route, you actually won't be able to get up on this platform, but you will be able to get up on like the fence here. And so if that's the case for you, you want to run along this fence and then get over in this corner and infinite jump your way up onto this next platform. You'll have to go a lot higher than this and then fall down onto it, but basically it will get you over here. Now, either way you get over here, the route will continue this way and up this ramp and around and up to the point here. Now, this is kind of a weird spot, so I'm actually going to jump off here and I'll show you the other route first because we won't be able to go back to that. So I like, I actually like this route better, but it's really only, it's, it's doable on PS4 or PS5, but it's much easier on PS5 because it's easier to infinite jump on PS5. So basically you just keep going this way and infinite jump your way over two more invisible barriers. So you can see we'd get over this barrier and then we'd head out and then we'd be out of the arena. So I actually use that route quite a bit, but I'm gonna head back in here and show you the quote unquote normal one, which is actually the one that I think most people will wanna use because it's actually easier to do on PS4 um, because you don't have to infinite jump so much. So you just head up in the corner here. This is where we were a minute ago, up onto this platform, which we were just on a minute ago and around to the ramp like we did. up here onto this roof, right up to the tip. Now, this is this is the weird part, but I'm gonna jump off here and deploy my glider and it's gonna teleport me over there. Okay, ready? There we go. 
You might have to infinite jump a little bit right away when you get there. Um, I don't know exactly why that is. They don't want you to use the glider there, but it, it teleports you away. But either way you do that, we've gotten out of the arena, which is what we wanted. And now we need to head and find a stash, which is the one I'm going to use is in Lowlands Path. So I'm going to call the Sunwing. You don't have to have the Sunwing for this. You can take a regular mount or you could just walk. But obviously the Sunwing is fastest. Um, the only thing here is you do not want to go too far in this direction that I'm going right now, which is east. Basically, you don't want to go towards the entrance of the arena. If you go too far that way um, and cross the river, roughly, then you'll get teleported back into the arena when the challenge fails like it just did. Except you can see it just failed and we didn't get teleported back because we headed south. So uh, you can see here I have the marker set from when we had the map open before, which is kind of handy. So I'm going to head to Lowlands Path here. And hop down. And I actually, I, did not, I didn't show you here, but we're invincible in this state, in case that's something interesting you wanted to know. Um, you'll get down to 1 HP and then you won't take any more damage while you're in this like limbo state. So we open the stash and then we go to our inventory. And basically what we want to do here is just highlight everything with triangle that you want to be able to duplicate. So I'm just going to go here, throw here and highlight everything in my inventory in all the areas of the inventory. Um, but for each one, you need to hit store when you're done, because if you switch and go back to like tools or go to tools next, and you come back here, these won't be selected anymore. So I'm going to go through and do my whole inventory. I want to give a big shout out to my friends, Mr. Fancy Pants and Paris over on Discord and YouTube, who actually developed a lot of this exploit and shared it with me over on my Discord server. There's also a lot of other people involved in this, specifically from the speedrunning community figuring out the infinite jump piece. And so I'll have my Reddit post linked below where I document as best as I can who kind of deserves credit for which pieces of figuring out this exploit. Okay, so that's going to be everything in my inventory. You can just take note, I have one Fireclaw Strike piece right now, so that's kind of a good marker to see how we'll be able to get two of them by the end of this. And remember, you can't duplicate weapons or outfits, so make sure you take off any weaves or coils on those that you want to be able to duplicate before you start this. Okay, so now we just want to head back to the arena, which we have to do because we can't quit the challenge like normal right now because it's in this weird limbo state. You can see the timer stopped. So we're going to head back to the arena, get on the Sunwing. Um, and it can be a little bit hard to navigate right now because you can't open the map. So what I like to do is basically head for this big mountain right in front of me here. And that's a kind of a good reference point. You can see the arena like walls are right there. OK, so you want to get off right about here. If you get a little too close to the campfire, you won't be able to get off the Sunwing normally. So we'll just jump off and run into the arena. Okay, so now because we can't stop the challenge normally, we're just going to talk to Ready Kala to again, the pick the same challenge, start it, skip the intro scene just so it goes a little bit faster, and then we can abandon it from here. And this is going to put us back into the state before we did anything with the arena. Okay. So now that was some good fighting. We're all done. And at this point, everything's duplicated. So we can take a look in our inventory. I still have one Fireclaw strike piece. That was our kind of reference point, right? Still have all this stuff in my inventory that I had before I started the arena. Which is, that's how the arena works. It basically looks at your inventory and says, what's here before you started? And then it restores it when you're done. And if I go to my stash now, you can see I have duplicates. And you can really see with the coils, because I had, remember, I had no coils in here. And I had no strike pieces in here. But they're in here. And they're also in my inventory. So we've just duplicated everything. Now, before you take stuff out of here, if you're using this to farm shards, a good idea is to just, before you take anything out of the stash, because remember, that's an exact copy of your inventory, go to a merchant and sell all the coils, tools, resources, and um, you can't sell strike pieces, but coils, coils, tools, and resources. Don't sell your outfits and don't sell your weapons because those were not duplicated, okay? So I'm going to mark all this right now so we can see how much it's worth. Okay. 
Okay, so that's just all the coils and weaves, and you can see down here in the bottom right, if I sold all these, I'll get over 100,000 shards just for the coils and weaves. And then we still have tools, and we still have resources to sell. Um, so you can see, you, could, you can make hundreds of thousands of shards doing this very easily in one run. So as I mentioned before, before you do any of the duplication steps, you want to make sure that you have everything in your inventory that you want to duplicate, including weapon coils that might be on your weapons currently. So you want to unload those. But there's actually two coils that you can get from the locked loadout challenges that are unique and not available anywhere else in the game that we can get using a similar exploit. The first one is the 25% critical hit damage coil, which Mr. Fancy Pants recently used to reclaim the single shot world record damage from me. And the second one is an instant shocked 1% chance coil, which which you can get from From the Deep, Tremor Tusk Tussle, and Dreaded Encounter. The critical hit damage coil can come from Apex Predators or Dreaded Encounter. So Dreaded Encounter is the best one to do if you have access to it because you can get both in one shot. So we're going to load up Dreaded Encounter here. Now the reason this works is because during locked loadout challenges, the game sets you up with a certain set of weapons on your weapon wheel. But it's also setting you up with a outfit and coils and weaves that are set as well. You just can't see them right now because your inventory isn't available. So we're going to head over to the corner just like we did before and then infinite jump our way out. But now when you get to this corner, instead of going up the ramp, you're going to continue past it right into the corner here and jump over and then head through the Memorial Grove back to the merchant in the arena. Okay, so we're here at the merchant, and what we're gonna do is go to sell, coils, and then you can see we have the two copies of the instant shock chance coil. So we're gonna sell that. And then here's the critical hit damage coil. So we'll sell that. Now it's also worth noting that if you don't already have a certain weapon, like for example, if you didn't have a corrosive blast sling or the rip steel shredder gauntlet, you could sell weapons as well. You just can only have one copy of those um, because the game hard locks you to only have one copy of weapons. So there are some weapons that you maybe want to get from different locked loadout challenges that you can sell off right now. And then essentially what you want to do is just go to abandon challenge. And this is going to put us back just like abandoning a challenge or failing a challenge like normal. We're going to head back into the arena. That was some good back here to the start. And we get all of our normal inventory back, right? Just like normal, it gives us our normal inventory back. However, at the merchant, we can go to the buyback section and the critical hit damage and instant shock chance coils are there. So we can buy those back from the merchant. So also you might be curious how many copies of an item you can get. Well, I don't have anywhere near the limit. I have like 20 or 30 copies um, of coils and then I sold the rest for shards. But people have discovered that the inventory limit is 10,000 for most items. Um, except ammo, which has like hard limits on each type. And then the stash limit is appears to be limitless. It, it, maybe it's 100,000, maybe it's a million. Nobody's hit the limit yet on the stash. So obviously you can do uh, more duplicating than anybody could ever need with this exploit. Okay, so now let me teach you the two different methods of infinite jumping. There's one method that's only possible with 60 FPS, which is only possible on PS5 performance mode. And then there's a method that's possible for 30 FPS, which is if you're on PS4, or if you're on resolution mode on PS5, which is what I'm on right now to simulate being on PS4. So let's start with that one because it's a little bit more difficult and it's probably what most people are going to use. But if you have PS5 and you can put it on performance mode, I would highly recommend doing that because that's much easier and we'll go over that next. So I'm here at the north end of the arena, which is a good place to practice because we have some walls as well as some invisible walls that we can practice on. If you are doing this on PS4, then it's really important that you head into your settings and go to the weapon wheel slowdown setting and put this on either slowest or slower. I would recommend starting with slowest if you're just learning. Okay, so for the PS4 30 FPS method, um, and actually for both methods, what you start out by doing is heading up to the wall that you want to jump up and holding the left stick forward. And you just hold that forward the whole time that we're going to do this. And we alternate between jumping and opening our weapon wheel for the PS4 30 FPS method. So what's tricky about this is the timing between when you jump and when you open the weapon wheel, and then also when you let go of the weapon wheel and jump again is very important, otherwise it won't work. So 
the first half of it, when you jump and then open the weapon wheel, you need to open the weapon wheel as Aloy is still moving upwards. If you open it a little bit too late, then it won't work. So you need to basically immediately press L1 right after you press X to jump. And then you're gonna wait for her to extend her legs and the screen moves up and then you can jump again. Now, I did the wrong thing there on the second half is I tried to jump a little bit too soon. So you need to wait just a brief moment after letting go of the weapon wheel as well. Okay, so let's see if I can get to the top of the wall here. Okay, so we're at the top of the wall on an invisible platform now. And now I will show you the easier method that you can do on PS5 performance mode. Okay, so if you have PS5 and you can turn performance mode on, then you can do the easier method, which doesn't rely on the weapon wheel, but instead relies on being able to aim. However, you do have to have arrows crafted. So if you don't have any ammo for some reason, then this won't work. You have to have at least one arrow um, or any other weapon that allows you to aim and use it while moving. So like for example, spike throwers will not work because they won't allow you to use them while jumping. But a bow or a shredder gauntlet will work. Okay, so we hold into the wall just like the other method. And then we pretty much alternate between jumping and aiming with L2. So jump L2, jump L2, jump L2. You can see that this one is quite a bit easier. There's less to keep track of. And the timing is a little bit more simple. So that's quite a bit easier if you have access to it, but the weapon wheel method's totally doable too. It just takes a little bit more practice. All right guys, between this video and the other one I posted today showing some other fun glitches, those are all the exploits I currently know of in Forbidden West patch 1.18. And as you saw, they're pretty crazy. So if you wanna utilize these, I recommend you do so very soon. These glitches will be easy fixes for Gorilla to make, and I can't imagine it will be very long before they patch them. If you can't take advantage of these right now, then you could disconnect your console from the internet to avoid getting an automatic patch and give yourself some more time to do them. I hope you guys have fun with these exploits if you decide to use them, and if you find them useful, then leaving a like on this video would be much appreciated. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.